Three days before the Buffalo shooting, I received a notification from a prison in Arizona that Frank Roque had died. Mm. Frank Roque is the white supremacist mm. who took the life of Bulbir Singh Sodhi after 9-11 20 years ago. And in hearing about his death, I felt both relief that the story was over <laughs> and also sorrow. I also grieved him because 15 years after Frank took Bobir uncle's life, the family and I reached out to him to talk to him and he apologized to us. He said, I'm sorry for what I did to your uncle. And when I go to heaven to be judged by God, I will ask to see your uncle and I will hug him and I will ask for his forgiveness. And that is when I realized that forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is freedom from hate. And I could stop hating him because forgiveness was for me, not for him. It was for me. And for me, forgiveness came at the very end of a very long healing journey. But for others, like the families who saw their loved ones killed by Dylan Roof and Charleston, forgiveness came at the very beginning. They looked into the eyes of this young, sick boy and and said, I forgive you. And I cringed, but I realized that they were saying, you cannot make me hate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for some of us, forgiveness comes at the end. For others at the beginning. For others in the messy middle. For others still, you withhold your forgiveness because it's your only act of agency. And that's okay. That's up to the survivor. But once we did forgive Frank, it opened up the previously unimaginable possibility of reconciliation. So we reconciled with Frank. And when he died instead of it just being a forgotten criminal, we actually wept for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Rana Sodhi, the brother of Bobir Singh Sodhi said, you know, he's up there right now. He's asking permission to give my brother a hug. And that made me cry all over again. <laughs> and so to see like, you know, the see, to see the growth that was possible for this man who I'd seen as a monster, you know, and then for three days later to see a young kid espouse the same ideologies on this rampage of, of, of evil, of this bloodshed, just made me so profoundly sad. And it made me feel that every time someone says, oh, we just have to wait for those people to die out, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you don't understand mm -hmm. <laughs> how insidious this is, how deep it goes, how far it spreads, how it's woven into our culture, and and to have the audacity to say that there are no such thing as monsters in this world, but only human beings who are wounded who act out of their grief or insecurity or fear, that, that doesn't make them any less dangerous. But when we see their wound, they lose their power over us. I am not afraid of that gunman or people like them. I am sorry for them because I see how inflicted they are. And that, that gives us the power to say who in our own communities can we tend to? It may not be my role as a person of color to tend to that grief, but it may be yours. And that's where we have the idea that every single person has a role to play in birthing that nation that is safe for all of us.